I've spent around 50 hours playing Dave the Diver since its release and during that time I've seen practically all aspects of the game, including completing all quests and side quests, collecting every animal with a 3 star rating and building up my sushi restaurant to generate around 30,000 gold every evening. So at this point I feel like I can help others to elevate their experience of the game and avoid making all the same mistakes that I did. With all that said, here are 7 things that I wish I knew sooner in Dave the Diver. Number 1 is choosing the right weapons. There are 8 craftable weapons in the game but you only really need 2 specific weapons to complete the game's content. A tranquilizer gun and the net gun. Any tranquilizer gun will work but I recommend the tranquilizer rifle since you already start with the basic underwater rifle needed to craft it. That means that you can save yourself from wasting valuable resources and put them towards other things early in the game. The tranquilizer rifle also has the ability to induce damage so it's incredibly versatile and due to the gun holding 8 bullets and having a 40% chance to put fish to sleep, it's a great weapon for catching larger fish and mammals with a 3 star rating. The only real downfall to this weapon is that since there is not a guaranteed chance to induce sleep, it is possible to kill the fish you're trying to catch before the tranquilization effect occurs. However, I would say that this is fairly rare. Additionally, it cannot be used on smaller fish since it generally does more damage than the overall health of a small fish. However, this is exactly why we have the net gun, and the net gun will fill in all the holes that the tranquilizer rifle leaves. This will allow us to capture small fish, and eventually the fully upgraded net gun will allow us to capture crabs and the blue spotted stargazer, which cannot be caught with any other weapon. Therefore, these two weapons alone will allow you to capture every animal in the game with a 3 star rating for the least number of resources. Of course, the weapon variation in the game offers a lot of fun, so definitely play around with what you enjoy, but if you want to put yourself in the best situation to start with, focus on obtaining these two guns first and then whatever gun you want to experiment with afterwards. Number 2 is that different maps have different fish. This may seem obvious, however what you might not realise is that it's possible to go a week or so without stumbling across a particular map. For me at least, the map with the abundance of kelp was extremely rare. This meant that as I progressed towards the end of the game, a large amount of my time was spent diving in and out of the water, checking if the kelp map had spawned so that I could catch the last few species of fish. This would have gone much smoother if I had paid it more attention earlier in the game, as I could have caught some of the fish species early and had less to focus on towards the end of the game. So if you do notice a map design that you're not familiar with, it might be worth checking it out. Number 3 is collecting materials as you go. This mainly applies to cooking pots and valuable ores since they will have the biggest bottleneck when it comes to some of the game's additional content. However, it does also apply to rope and other cooking ingredients like seaweed. Cooking pots will provide you with cooking ingredients required to make better food. They will also have a chance of dropping a particular item which you will need around 5 of to unlock a hidden quest later in the game. With regard to valuable ores, the rarer ores like diamond, amethyst and other late game ores are not a guaranteed spawn. Therefore, just like the drops from cooking pots, it's best to build up an inventory of them when you discover over them in passing. I recommend that you pay additional attention to topaz since it's a requirement for the final upgrade of the net gun and also ruby since there's an animal species associated with the mining of ruby which has a particularly low drop rate. Another thing to look out for are cuttlefish since they will drop skin fragments that are a requirement to upgrade any gun to the tranquilizing version of that gun. The drop rate on cuttlefish skin fragments are not super low but they're also not as frequent as you would think. So make a point to harvest cuttlefish when you see them until you get at least three. Number 4 is choosing your menu. When it comes to choosing your menu, be careful not to add all of your available resources to the menu for one night. Bancho states early in the game that he does not reuse sushi, and what this means is that any unsold dishes will be lost as well as all of the ingredients used to create them. Instead, you should make use of the auto supply feature. This feature will resupply dishes as required as long as you have the ingredients to make them. You can do this when selecting your menu by assigning a dish, selecting the dish, and choosing the auto supply option. You'll be able to tell what dishes have auto supply turned on by the auto sticker in the top right of each dish. Number 5 is choosing your staff at the right time. Staff are a really big help when it comes to running the restaurant, so I would definitely recommend making the use out of them as soon as they're available. Staff have stats in 4 areas, cooking, serving, procure and appeal. You should place staff that are naturally good at cooking in the kitchen and staff that are naturally good at serving in the dining area. And when you hit a gold cooks the rating, I would recommend putting out an internet advert to hire staff at a level much higher than your current rating. When you're at a gold rating, there's only 2 ratings above you, so an internet advert will make the best staff in the game available to you sooner. One thing to consider when choosing your staff is how involved you'd like to be during the opening hours. For example, I really enjoy having a fully automatic kitchen, so I have Raptor and El Nino as my dining area staff, and between them they can pour beer and tea, make cocktails, clear the tables, and fill the wasabi. This means I can basically do nothing and still earn a high amount of gold. Number 6 is maximising your fish farm. When you unlock the fish farm you'll be able to breed and harvest your own fish. This will save you a lot of time during the day as you'll no longer have to actively hunt for fish. To make the most of this feature, I would recommend trying to collect at least two row of each species that you'd like to sell at your restaurant. To collect raw you'll need to either kill or capture that specific species Although it's not a guaranteed drop, so you might need to farm them slightly in the beginning just to set this up. A point to make here is that you probably don't need two of every single species in your fish farm. I would recommend focusing on the best two or three species of fish available to you at that moment. For example, if the deepest you've ventured is the depths, you might want to try and get two megamouth sharks, 
two comb jellyfish and two frilled sharks. This would create a farm for these high quality fish which means you wouldn't have to actively hunt them in order to maintain your restaurant with these ingredients. Number 7 is buy fragments from Dua's workshop. Dua is a blacksmith located in the Sea People village and after completing the side quest Sea Person at the workshop you'll be able to trade with him. He sells fragments for 2B each which is ridiculously cheap and since every upgrade in the game requires a lot of fragments this is easily the best method available to obtain them. You should already have a bunch of the bay currency from the Sea Village side quests but if you need more you can always race your seahorses or complete the quest pinned on the notice board. Anyway that's all for now so click like if you found the video helpful and if you want to see more content like this subscribe to the channel.